Hello and welcome to another episode of Naphammer Parental Painting. Uh, this is the series where we try to paint in ways that are uh, tabletop ready. Don't expect these to win you any kind of golden demon, but they're quick paint jobs to get your army up to tabletop standard. Uh, especially when you're dealing with kiddos, every minute counts. So uh, a lot of these paint jobs will make use of contrast and shades and all of that. So today we are going to be learning how to paint up uh, the Cypher Lords, uh, the Eyes of the Cosmos color scheme. Uh, right now they are our protagonists for our War Cry solo campaign and I'm going to teach you how to paint up their color scheme. Uh, I have two Chaos Warriors that have been converted to match with the uh, Eyes of the Cosmos. I had extra bits around, so I used those for the Chaos uh, Warriors. The reason I did that is I, when I bring my Chaos Army to the table in Age of Sigmar, I usually play Ravagers. And since the Ravagers can bring up to 10 Cultist models, uh, but there is no FAQ as of this moment that specifies what their base size is for Cultist models, uh, I figured some extra Chaos Warriors that I had lying around would be good for making... Uh, my army. So. so our first color is going to go ahead and just be that contrast Gilliman flesh and I'm only really using it on the hands uh, for hands and arms for these two warriors. Once you've gotten your skin painted, your next big color is going to be Seraphim Sepia. And you're going to want to put that just on everything that is armor, including the helmets. So everything that is armor, including the helmets, for these guys is going to get a nice layer of Seraphim Sepia. If you watch the Iron Golems video, this is close to that same technique that we use for the Iron Golems armor. Uh, but instead of doing Agrax Earth Shade after this step, we're going to do a different highlight. Once that wash is dried, you're going to want to just pick out any of the uh, parts of the armor that are raised with a pallid witch flesh. So any of those parts that are, of those armors that are raised, you'll just want to pick out nice pallid witch flesh. Try to make it as smooth as possible. Um, you want to make sure that you water your paints down. Make sure that they aren't super clumpy. White paints tend to have a uh, tend to dry a lot clumpier just because they have more pigment in them so that way you can see the color. Um, so just make sure that you've watered your paints down and you're going to want to just on those raised pieces of armor, uh, especially on the head and on the shoulder pads, you're just going to want to paint a pallid witch flesh in. Um, I recommend like raised parts of the uh, foot armor, the knee pad, uh, the helmets themselves, especially uh, where those points on the nose are that go up into the eyes. Uh, those are the areas you're going to want to hit. Once you've gotten that uh, pallid witch flesh on, the next thing to do is to add on. Uh, our red for our coats, for our capes, and for our headdresses. Uh, you're going to start off with Screamer Pink as the base, so Screamer Pink will make that red for you. Uh, seems, well, you'll see, you'll see why in a second why I'm using Screamer Pink. It was actually, uh, I used to do it, I used to do these red cloaks building up Screamer Pink, then like Corn Red, and up and up and up, but this way that I found looks just as good, and it's a little bit faster. So we'll go ahead and get that Screamer Pink on there. If you get it onto the fur, that's okay, we're going to go back over the fur anyways, um, with white to when we get to our touch-up stage. 
but you want to try to get it, not let it get on the armor. Once you've gotten that uh, screamer pink nice and dry, uh, then you're going to add a layer of contrast blood angels red to those capes. Now that that has dried, the next part is your layering. Uh, we're going to go to a Wild Rider red layer uh, for our next color, just adding that orange. Uh, we're only hitting the raised edges of the cape, so the very big highlights. You might have to do two layers of this, uh, depending on how it sits. You want it to be a nice, solid uh, Wild Rider red, rather than a kind of loosened up one. So again we're gonna pick out just the big raised edges of the cloak. Once you got that orange on your next step is gonna be just cleaning up anywhere that you have cause some color to get on things that should be white, especially since these next steps are going to involve a lot of contrast. So anywhere like the fur you'll want to have white, anywhere like the ha the hair tips you'll want to have white. Uh, on the front, uh, if you're using the arms for the Cypher Lords, there are these wristbands you're going to want to get white uh, just because they get leather on them. Boots, um, fur, those are the main things. Uh, because the rest is just going to be contrasts and metals. So we'll go ahead and get these cleaned up and we'll move on to the next step which will be the hair. So once you have the white spot back on we're now going to work on the fur and the hair. Uh, the way that I do it for the Cypher Lords is Contrast Paint has this really nice thing where it wet blends really easily. So if you start with one color and move on to the next while it is still uh, wet, it will give a nice gradient from lighter to darker. Uh, so the three colors that I'm going to be using is for the start at the base, it will be a um, Aethermatic Blue, followed up by a Pterodon Turquoise, and then ending with our Contrast Black Templar. So those are the paints that I'm going to be using. Uh, well, I'll try and go ahead and just show you an example of what I mean by that um, using these. So I will start off with a heavy Aethermatic Blue. So we'll get that there concentrated where I want the lightest. Um, down at the bottom and while that's still wet um, without cleaning my brush because the nice thing is when you're going from light to dark uh, you don't really need to clean your brush and it keeps that wet blending a little bit easier uh, I'll move on to the pterodon turquoise and then I will finish off with the Black Templar. And with the black I'm going to start away from where I want it to blend and then move up. And then for these Chaos Warriors I'm going to have the light be closer to the head and the darker be further away from the fur. Once that dries, next step is going to be our gold. Uh, I like to use a Gehenna's Gold for any of my gold layers. And for these guys in particular, uh, I'm going to be placing gold on the top and sides of their helmets. Um, also, all in the back. So that whole back will be covered with gold and then the shaft that holds the plume on. 
Later on in the process, after I've done the swords, I'll also put this gold onto the hilts and the pommels just to give it a little bit distinguishing. Uh, but I know myself and I know I can get a little bit shaky when it comes to silvers and putting silvers on, so I'm going to wait for later to do that. Also, at this point, uh, just so I don't keep mentioning it and using it as a step, anytime that you have paint go over uh, onto somewhere where it's not supposed to be, go ahead and just fix that up. Uh, like on these shoulder pads here, there's some blue, there's some red down on the elbow. I'll just take that pallid witch flesh again and fix it up. So go ahead and get gold onto those parts. You might need two layers depending on how this gold sits into its frame. Um, but if it's nice and thick or it covers it well, then you only need one layer. Uh, so once you get that gold on there and once it starts to dry, the next layer that you're going to add on to is a storm host silver layer. Um, so that is going to be your next layer. You're going to want to put it onto like the swords, onto the chain mail, uh, but storm host silver onto swords and chain mail. Once the silver's done, you're going to want to use a uh, black Templar contrast to just put on top of any area that you made silver. Uh, it'll really stick out with highlights and things, especially for the Scyflor's box. Their swords all have these, uh, like, flutes in, um, flutes in them. I think that's the word, but, like, those lines. And this just really helps bring it out while not really uh, overpowering the silver. I say is if you put too much on that first stroke, uh, don't re-dip your brush. Just continue to uh, use the black that you put on that first sword for the rest of the silver. But this will look really good on the silver that you have and then also the chain mail for the weapons. So after that last step, I just did some touch-ups um, where... I use the gold for the hilts of the swords and the pommel, so those have gold. Uh, for the grips, I just went back through with white and then did Blood Angels Contrast. And then I added some uh, Armageddon Dunes onto the base in order to make that. Uh, so what I'm going to do with this next step is I'm going to use my white, my uh, Corax white, to just make sure that everything on the base, any overspills, are back to white, and then do a nice light dusting of white over the top of the Armageddon Dunes. This is how we're going to make that Realm of Light basing for these guys. So nice dusting. It can be heavy, as heavy as you want or as light as you want for that base. Um, just heavier it is, more yellow look. The lighter it is, the yes, less yellow look because we're going to, again, use a contrast for the next step. Once that process is dry, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to use uh, a contrast of Edian Yellow, so Edian Yellow contrast, and you're just going to put it all over the base. It's two simple steps, really. Um, yellow all over the base, and then seraphim sepia on the areas that are not raised. Once your contrast is dry, you'll be ready to add on your seraphim sepia. Um, I found that when putting contrast on flat bases, they tend to dry from edges inward, uh, so I usually take that opportunity to do the base trim, especially if you're doing a dark base trim like I have for black. If you're doing a light base trim, you might just want to wait because you might go over with your seraphim sepia and then have to uh, rewash. So, last one is our seraphim sepia. Oh, I gotta be careful, my hands are shaking. It's later at night. 
so I want to <laughs> make sure I don't spill this. And while right now on the screen you may not be able to see much, this kind of, I find, ties the whole thing together. At least on the base. And that is the last step for painting the Cypher Lords. And there you have it. Those are the steps for painting the main color scheme on the Nap Hammer Cypher Lords Warband, also known as the Eyes of the Cosmos. Uh, as we continue on growing our channel, if there's any time that you see a paint scheme that you would like to be taught how to paint, uh, feel free to leave it in the comments. Uh, I'll be checking those and I'll try to keep a list of things that people request. Um, a lot of my methods, again, they are not golden demon winning, but they are definitely tabletop ready, uh, especially for those of you who may not have as much time uh, for painting uh, as you'd like, whether it's kids or other uh, hobby uh, time sinks. So thank you very much for watching. Please like and subscribe for more content like this. Uh, we also run narrative workshops where I talk you through how to run a narrative campaign based off of my experience. Uh, we also have battle reports in Warcry, and we also have uh, painting tutorials just like this. So thank you very much, and as always, keep telling your stories.